unless you really, really have to. In the last two videos, I've talked about the philosophy of microservices. I have described this perfect utopia that has perfect boundaries and perfect microservices. It's time to come back to reality. Now I mentioned that microservices is a great way to work on complex projects because we split it up into smaller independent and simple projects. That is and will always be true. The hard part is splitting it up into small and independent pieces. Microservices is a pattern that takes distributed computation to an extreme. If you don't know what distributed computation is, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's distributing your computation across multiple processes, across multiple servers, maybe across the world. Now, the thing about the distributed computation is that it is hard. And by hard, I mean really hard. And it takes someone who really know what they're doing. Here's why. A monolithic code base is extremely flexible. You can move code around as you please. You can have any piece of code talk to any other piece of code. You can do things like asset transactions, a unified data model that you can run arbitrary queries on. You have shared memory across everything and it's beautiful. That's how we start learning software development by building monoliths. However, as soon as you start breaking it up into chunks, suddenly things get really non-trivial to put together. If you don't have very good separation of concerns, you will have two or three or maybe even more of these distributed services constantly talking to each other and basically acting as a monolith, but worse. You now have to rely on network calls to communicate between services to get data from one place to another. You have to coordinate between the microservices and your performance starts to dip as you rely more and more on network calls. And don't even get me started on cap. It's a whole another realm of complexity and difficulty that you have to cross before you can get to that utopia. Practically speaking, most projects that exist in the world will never reach a point where that microservices utopia is feasible. And here's why. When you're starting off a new project, your goal is to deliver business value as fast as possible so that you can exist but you have limited manpower. You can put that effort into keeping your code as simple as possible so that you can deliver business value, you can get traction, and you get users, you get engagement, and you scale. Or you can put that effort into building microservices and securing yourself for the long term while delivering no business value and dying a violent and painful death. The project, not you as a person. What that means is that unless you have unlimited money to burn through for a year or two, you will build a monolith. Repeat after me. I will build a monolith. Thank you. So now what? Now you have a monolith. And the only thing that is more difficult than creating microservices from scratch is creating microservices from a monolith. That means that there is never really going to be a time for you to switch from a monolith to full microservices. You will stay on a monolithic architecture for as long as possible. You are not going to build microservices unless you really, really have to. And by that, I mean, unless you are Netflix or Uber. If you are Netflix or Uber, well, stop watching this video and go and hire someone who can build you microservices. Go, go, now. Yeah, right now. I'll wait. Are they gone? Cool. For the rest of you, you are not Netflix. You're not Uber. You're not Amazon. Don't pretend you are. Just don't build microservices. So now you might be asking, why did I create two videos ranting about this perfect microservices utopia when it's going to be unachievable for most projects? And that is a really good question. That is a good question. Microservices Utopia. Why did I do that? <laughs>